of our new Idaho State Museum. There are so many amazing things about this foyer that we want to share with everyone. Number one, our donor wall will be right here, recognizing all of the great partners that we have received from throughout the state and helping us to raise the needed funds for this major new expansion and renovation of our museum. So thank you to everyone who's our, who have been partners and donors with us. Then what you see right behind me is part of the original facade of the museum. We did try in this restoration project to keep some of the original fabric of the building. And so what you can see in that original facade is the um, original Art Deco style of the, of the construction with the green that represents the forests of the north and the little artistic uh, iconography there, and the gold that represents, of course, the gold that made it. Idaho and its early development, a very sought after location. Other things to notice in this space are our new museum store and the beautiful detailing of the space. I want to talk a little bit about this gorgeous tile and how this tile already reflects the themes of the exhibition, which includes land and people shaping each other and the importance of water in Idaho. So you can see this very beautiful shiny shape that looks like a river, almost a metaphorical river, that leads people in from at the minute they walk into the building, uh, following this pathway, if you will, leading them into the galleries. And this idea of water is metaphorically described throughout the exhibitions, in the tile, in the carpet, and in the multimedia events. We are so excited about the new museum store. We know that a great store experience will be highly uh, desirable by our visitors. And so what we'll be able to showcase in the store are products that have been made in Idaho, products that feature the history of our state, and sort of mirroring again the idea of our exhibitions with that our state is amazing and we are featuring the state from it in a geographic point of view. So Salmon River North, the Central Mountainous Regions, and the Snake River Plain. So we'll have um, things in the store that reflect that interpretation. We'll also have artisan materials and jewelry. And we will have uh, pieces that represent each of Idaho's five federally recognized tribes. We'll also have a great selection for kids. And it will be a very unique, amazing experience as part of the museum visit. Well, we are in the new community room at the Idaho State Museum. And this room is available for all kinds of uses. It can be a place where the governor can do the state of the state address. It can be a place where people can rent it for their own private events or corporate events. It can be a place where we have a quilt show. The great thing about this space is that it's highly flexible. But what is so unique about it is that we'll have the original bar that was in the original museum and the dome, the beautiful stained glass dome that came out of the Oahe Hotel. So it will be a new space, but will be outfitted with some of these great iconic objects of Idaho's history. And exactly where I'm standing, we will also showcase the Carte Piano, and that will be an, an artifact that is here, living, breathing artifact that will be able to be played on the weekends by pianists from throughout our state. So we're extremely excited to share that artifact. The other beautiful thing about this space is that we have this gorgeous view over Julia Davis Park so people can enjoy the inside, outside ambiance of the space. There will also be access to our um, the backside of the museum so that when we have catering events, people can spill out onto the lawn, either on Capitol Boulevard or at in the Julia Davis Park side. This space will be very uh, beautifully outfitted with technology of uh, what's expected for a space like this. The room can darken down and it can be used for events that feature uh, multimedia and other presentations that might be useful for meetings. So a completely beautiful room, highly um, multiple in use, and we're very excited to share this with the public. So we're here, we're in the, uh, again, a foyer area that leads people to the family galleries, which are in the garden level, and then the main galleries of Idaho history, which are in the upper level. Wanted to point out here, again, this effort that we took to really preserve some of the original fabric of the building, the Art Deco architecture, which includes some of this pewter colored metal and the original color of the um, oak here. So you see that oak color followed throughout the whole building 
at the desk for the museum store, on all the doors, and anywhere there's a wood surface, we keep that color based upon the original fabric, the original architecture, and the original design. The Idaho State Museum is a complete renovation and um, an expansion of our state's history and its story. So the big ideas that we're communicating in the exhibition galleries include this idea of Idaho's land and the uniqueness of its shape. The distance between where Idaho's top reaches Canada and where we reach uh, Utah is almost the same distance as between New York and Chicago. So we have a very unique shape surrounded by states that are rectangular. That unique shape really drove human development of our state. So this idea of land and people over time shaping each other is a key story. And what we're looking at over here is the Origins Gallery. This gallery sets up these big ideas, this idea of the landscape and how it was altered over time by human inhabitation and human management. The other stories that are shared in here are the tribal origin stories, because there is really no more beautiful way than to talk about the inextricable connection between people and the land than the amazing, beautiful stories that are the creation stories of our tribes. Each of our five tribes have recorded their stories in English and in the tribal language, and so that will be featured in our tribal origins theater. And then as you wind your way through the story of land and people shaping each other, you'll learn about the ecosystems in Idaho, what were those natural resources that were tamed then by our human inhabitation, and how those resources were vital to survival of all of our people from tribes till today. You will wind your way through that exhibition, come up the stairway, and then you'll be able to actually look out over the space and get a glimpse of all of it as you are, are heading toward the permanent galleries. And about where we are standing, you'll be able to do an interactive map where you'll learn a little bit about how Idaho's borders changed and how we got this shape that is so unique. Right behind me then, here we will have a, a, a descriptive panel that leads people into the permanent galleries that tell the story of Idaho. And this will orient the visitor to understanding that the interpretation is from the Salmon River North, the central mountainous region, and the Snake River Plain. As we go into this gallery, one of the big first stories that people learn about is the epic journey of Lewis and Clark across our state and how they were aided by Sacagawea and Watkouis in order to make their journey successful. So we are standing right where the epic journey of Lewis and Clark, aided by Sacagawea and Watkouis, who was a Nez Perce uh, uh, woman. Uh, of course, Lewis and Clark came across all of Idaho, and they would not have been able to complete their journey without Sacagawea, who helped to be their guide, and Watkouis, who afforded them safe passage into Nez Perce country. So this is the landing place for the core story of Idaho that will be told from the Salmon River North, the Central Mountainous Region, and the Snake River Plain. North of the Salmon River, the great big stories told in the exhibition experience include mining, forestry, lakes and rivers, and transportation with a great amount of other amazing stories woven in, such as contemporary tribal land stewardship stories. So people will learn about how the Kootenai are so devoted to restoring and saving the sturgeon in their area, how the Coeur d'Alene monitor Lake Coeur d'Alene for our benefit, and a little bit about the Nez Perce War. The central mountainous regions, the large stories there include getting on a Salmon River scow and taking a ride down the Salmon River with help from Idaho Public Television. It is called the River of No Return for a reason, and that's because the current at that time would not allow boats to be able to come back up the river. You'll also get to understand a little bit about Idaho's natural resources, endangered species, and how our land is so, so valued for recreation. You'll get to get to the top of Baldy with a multimedia event, and you'll get to learn about Lonesome Larry and how he made it back up to Redfish Lake and actually helped to save the sockeye salmon species as the last salmon who made it up there. The other great story in the central part of the state is the 1927 outing that Governor Baldridge led, which led to a number of really nationally significant uh, stories of land preservation, led to the Idaho Primitive Act, which happened early in the century and then includes Idaho's 
really strong commitment to preserving our natural resources, up to and including Congressman Simpson's Boulder White Cone. And then in the Southern Galleries, we feature a lot of information about how we make the desert bloom through water management. And so in this section of the gallery, we learn a lot about the Oregon Trail and westward migration. We learn about how that migration really upset the fragile balance that the Native Americans relied upon for relying on the land and what happened as a white settlement happened and those conflicts began. You learn a lot about the different kinds of dams that were created that helped harness Idaho's rivers either for power, for irrigation, for flood control, or for recreation. You'll get to learn a lot about agriculture and the impact of ranching and farming. You'll get to learn a little bit about the highlights of Boise. You'll get to learn about the Idaho National Lab and its worldwide impact. And there is just an amazing story here of Idaho's great, great management of the southern part of the state that allowed the desert to bloom and allowed it to be really the breadbasket for Idaho and all of the crops that we know today and we rely upon for our food and for export. We're standing in the Treasures of Idaho gallery. This will be so exciting for our great visitors. Um, this gallery solves a lot of challenges that we had as an agency to ex exhibit our artifacts and archival material from the collection. So artifacts heretofore were not able to be um, outfitted in a way that allowed them to rotate easily. So we have this amazing collection of costume and historic dress from all ages. And this gallery has been purpose built to be able to feature artifacts by themselves. So we can have an exhibit of the first exhibit, in fact, will be inaugural gowns and inaugural paraphernalia over the years. This can be used for historic dress, but it could also be a place that features other artifact-based exhibits. Allows the public really to see these amazing resources, these amazing artifacts that we steward on behalf of the public of Idaho. So we're excited to share this gallery with everyone. This is about 2,500 feet, so it can be a standalone gallery. Or, as we move into the next gallery, um, it can be coupled with an adjacent gallery so that we can bring in Smithsonian traveling exhibitions for the first time with space up to about 7,000 feet. We're standing in the Syringa Gallery. For those of you who have visited the museum before we went under construction, you know this is the main place where we held special exhibitions or special programs, and that was just not enough space for the kind of uh, expectations our public had for us. So what is great now is that we will have these two purpose-built galleries that are specifically for either Smithsonian traveling exhibitions or exhibitions that we generate in-house with our great staff. And they have microclimates, which means that they will be able to um, stand the test of the external uh, exhibit standards. When you bring exhibits in, you have to have very tight controls on temperature and relative humidity. So these two galleries are really um, on their own separate mechanical system so that we can make sure that we attain the highest quality level of environmental controls for any kind of exhibitions or materials that we bring in. So this space is about 3,000 feet. So between these two galleries, we can be able to do two separate exhibits or do one large exhibit. And then what Anthony is going to show you as we walk out of Syringa, we will be overlooking the beautiful foyer that where we started. And this really will give the public an, uh, an option of being able to, again, see out over the space. We've really done a great job and our architects have done a great job of maximizing this beautiful original facility and allowing the new part of the building to showcase the original architecture and also give people a sense of the activity and action going on in the galleries. Hello everyone, I am Ryan Giroff and I am standing here in the family gallery section of the new museum. And where we're at at the moment is I am in the Stories from Idaho section. And this is where we're gonna be telling those great stories of some of Idaho's uh, great, basically, people from the past and those who have made a lasting impression on our state. So that's the section that I am currently standing in. As we go through this section, you're going to see basically stories from Idaho first. The next section that you're going to be seeing is going to be what's called the History Lab, and that's where you learn to use those historical resources with your life today. And it's really a lab which is geared for not just kids, but even adults to learn how those things are working. 
after we go through History Lab on the far end of this gallery, you're going to be seeing the area which we call Boomtown, Idaho. And that is our area which is really dedicated to creative play for children. It's dedicated to children who are seven years of age and younger. Although if you're a little bit older and want to play there, we promise we won't keep you out as well. Uh, but this whole area, again, is really dedicated to families and kind of some of those, those different pieces of Idaho history that we just weren't able to capture upstairs. So we think you're really going to enjoy this. We think that uh, kids are really going to enjoy this space. I can't wait. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old little girl. I can't wait to bring them in here later on this summer. And right now, I am currently standing where the model, the giant model railroad will be located that kids can climb on and actually put coal into the engine to make it go faster. Has all the different interactive buttons. Uh, over to my right here, you actually see basically uh, the area where kids are going to be able to learn how to do mining down in this area and actually be able to get gems uh, from, the, from the mountain, put it on the conveyor belt, and then see what it actually is worth over at the store. This is also where the Penny Arcade is at, so Deja Mu, our beloved uh, artifact from the past, will be there in the Penny Arcade. And then behind, or, uh, in front of me here in that space is where we have basically the area where for the architect's office, as well as the construction building blocks area. So again, a great large area here for kids to be able to come and learn about some of these early professions and history while they're visiting the museum. We're very proud that we did a lot of community engagement to help inform the design of our museum and all of our programs and our exhibits. So how did we do that? We did that through focus groups across the state. We have a great education advisory committee that helped us to think about how do we make this museum a great educational resource for the state. So we did not want to be fourth grade social studies only. We wanted history to be the mothership of all disciplines in our great state of Idaho. So our advisory committee made up of educators that represented every grade level and every discipline area talked with us a lot about how excited they were about that approach. So as you go through our museum, in the exhibits, you'll be able to understand the art of Idaho. If you're interested in STEM, you can take a STEM path through those galleries. If you're interested in social history, certainly you can. And you can also really enjoy just thinking about how all of those disciplines work together to tell the story of Idaho. Where we're standing now is in our education classroom spaces. We have a very strong commitment to education with the Idaho State Historical Society, but in particular our new state uh, museum because we want to be as relevant as possible for meeting all of the curriculum needs of the state. So these two classrooms will be able to be available for special tours that will be led by our education staff and they will be able to be outfitted for the kinds of things that students need for interactive learning, whether they're kind of make and take kind of activities or whether they're curriculum based activities for schools or whether they're family weekend activities. And the great thing here is that there's a great relationship between the education spaces themselves and our outdoor learning areas including Pioneer Village. This gives the students the opportunity to have both an inside and outside experience relative to connecting the stories that they learn inside the museum to some more of the environmental opportunities that we have for learning in the outside. See the education space is outfitted for kids to be able to have a place to stash their coats and their lunches and what have you when they come. And we designed our museum to be super focused on really leveraging Idaho's commitment to great education. Museums across our country serve an amazing education role and this museum will be no different. We understand the state's commitment to making sure that students have high level of achievement. Some of our programs that are already producing great impact in that regard include National History Day, we have education programs that are Old Idaho Penn, and our museum will offer continued opportunity to explore the history of Idaho and understand its relevance to today. Hopefully that makes an amazing opportunity for kids to think about the context of their community and how history is important to them and their family, how it's important to their community, and how it's important to our state and of course our country. We really love the opportunity as well to develop outreach through technology. And our new museum has been outfitted to be able to connect across the state and the world. 
So we will be able to have virtual tours through our galleries with our curators, and we'll be able to have device-based programming so that whether you are from Bonners Ferry or you're from Franklin, you'll be able to enjoy our new state museum.